Hi, Joan. Uh, obviously not the start you wanted to the season, but kind of finding your groove tonight. Uh, what was the difference for you out there and what's it been like over the last couple of games? Uh, pretty much just getting back into a rhythm. Uh, you know, just playing instead of thinking about everything. Um, you know, I got coaches behind me supporting me. My teammates supporting me. Uh, you know, I've had people back home, uh, family members, all that, you know, they kind of got on my butt to say it in a play way. And, uh, you know, pretty much told me that, you know, I'm representing a lot more than just myself. And, uh, you know, obviously they understood all the pauses that we've had. But, you know, that's not really an excuse. You always got to go out there and give your, you know, max effort. And uh, those first two games, I wasn't doing that. So I had to change that and uh, try to do a little bit better tonight. Next question for Matthew Gutierrez. Hey, Joe, thanks for, for your time. Uh, piggybacking off of that a little bit, I know you worked with uh, Coach GMAC quite a bit. Was there anything he relayed to you that, that was helpful, whether in practice or just in conversations to help you uh, get your rhythm? I mean, it's the same thing every day. Uh, you know, just pushing me. Uh, you know, GMAC's always the best. Uh, you know, all of our guards are always productive just because of the work he puts in with us. Uh, you know, anything specific, uh, you know, he just said go play. I and mean, then that pretty much is all it comes down to is uh, just being confident, going out and play, uh, and trying to help the team win. Our next question is from Eric Columbia. Hey, Joe. I, I know uh, in the first three games, or usually at the start of the season, you're not always playing the stiffest of competition, but considering all that the program has been through with the lack of practice, uh, how do you feel about how your team has been playing over these three games? Uh, you know, the first game was obviously a little bit harder and a little bit more rough than these past two. Um, but with that being said, we, I think we still score in the 90, uh, you know, point range. Uh, so that's not really, you know, much of our uh, a concern concern right now. Uh, obviously, a lot of it's on the defensive end. But I think just, you know, these three games have been helpful going into, you know, a little bit of a tougher schedule. Obviously, that's not a knock to the past two teams that we played. But uh, just leading up to it, we didn't get to have any exhibition games this year uh, or even have that really that orange and white scrimmage. Uh, to really get out here in the dome and play and run up and down. So it's been tough. Obviously, it's going to be a different year for everybody, though. So it's not really an excuse. Uh, it's just you just got to go out there and play, uh, be confident, and, uh, you know, work as one. Our next question is for Waters. Joe, you had obviously struggled from three-point range in the first couple games, and you missed, you missed your first one tonight. I was wondering what went through your head after that one. Did it feel good or not? And then... How did it feel when you made the, the second one you put up? Yeah, I knew the first one was going in. Uh, it just didn't come off my hands right. And I think that it was better better than it, you know, feeling good. Because if it felt good, I feel like I would have gotten in my head again. But like I said, I had family members back home. My coach is here. Pretty much, uh, you know, like I said, get on my butt. And uh, pretty much just say you got to play no matter what. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much what I was thinking. It's just, you know, keep playing. Uh, it's the first shot of the game. And there's going to be a lot more opportunities coming. And uh, we were winning at that time, so nothing really to be too upset about. It was in the beginning of the game. Our next question is from Stephen Bailey. Hey, Joe, uh, I wanted to ask you kind of about Buddy on a personal level. Like, what has your communication been like with him while he's in quarantine? And, um, yeah, I mean, you know, how do you think it's taken? he's taken it? I, I'd imagine it's pretty hard given all the work you guys put in over the last four months. Yeah, that's my brother. Uh, you know, Blood didn't make us any closer. Uh, you know, I think I'm just asking how he's doing because, you know, everybody knows Buddy. Uh, everybody knows he puts in the work. He's one of the hardest workers, you know, obviously here and if not in the country. Uh, he loves the game of basketball. Uh, he has a unique opportunity to play for his dad at one of the most prestige, uh, you know, basketball teams in the country. And uh, just to see it taken away from him for, you know, something that's not technically his fault, it just stinks. And, uh, you know, I feel bad for him because it could happen to any of us. And it just so happened to be for Buddy. So, you know, it stinks. Uh, you know, I'm probably going to try and text him again after the game to see how he's doing. Obviously, I miss him. Obviously, I wish he was out here with us. He's a big part of the team. And uh, like I said, that's my brother. Uh, you know, at the top of the show and all that kind of stuff. So we work out together all the time. And, uh, you know, it just stinks. There's really no positives about it other than maybe down the road. I want to hear him snoring in the room. But uh, other than that, nothing really. Our next question is from Andrew Crane. Hey, Joe. Uh, Coach said that the Allen's threes – uh, the four makes early on really set the tone. And obviously you got going, Kadari had one, and then the 12 overall in the first half. Was it anything specific that you noticed from from Riders' defense that created those opportunities? Or was it more just, just you guys hitting the open shots from your traditional offense um, that, that you would run against any team? Uh, I think a little bit of both. Uh, you know, Allen wasn't really, you know, happy with himself either after the last, uh, you know, game we had. 
And, uh, you know, he's a hard worker as well. So, I mean, he's going to come out here, be confident. It was nothing was going to change for him. And, you know, he came out firing and, you know, pretty much everyone hit the bottom of the net. And, uh, you know, we're really confident what he can do. He's really confident in himself. But, uh, you know, obviously there was open shots. You know, we looked for him. Um, and then against any zone, you try and beat it up the court, you're going to get open threes. And even in a zone, only in a half court, you know, we understand it as we play that defense every time that there's going to be times where there's open threes, so whether something breaks down or something like that. And uh, it just so happened to be in the beginning of the game for us. And, you know, more fortunate than not, you know, we decided to knock him down. We have time for a couple more questions. The first will be from Matt Houseworth. You know, I believe uh, one three-pointer shy of a single-game school record. Is this um, maybe the, the best three-pointing, three-point shooting team you've been a part of? Uh, yeah, I mean, as of right now, it looks it. Um, you know, last year we had guys like, you know, Elijah and Buddy as well. Um, but that was kind of, you know, the peak. It seems like this team is really deep at, the, you know, shooting the ball. Uh, you know, Allen obviously lit it up tonight. Buddy's obviously a great shooter and unfortunately not here right now. Um, even with capable shooters they're all good shooters and uh, they showed it tonight uh, you know even Rob Braswell uh, you know he's he's lighting it up sometimes so I mean we got a lot of you know a lot of threats from the three-point range which is you know in today's college basketball game really beneficial and uh, we look forward to you know using that as the season goes on but uh, we just got so many guys that can shoot it uh, that makes it really fun to watch really fun to play. And our final question will be from Donna DeSoto. No, I love giving the final question. I actually was going to ask you about the shooting, Joe, and you've been asked a ton of questions about it. But let me ask you this. You know, d does making all those shots in the first half open up other things in the second half? Did you guys have – were there plays that you could make in the second half because you shot it so well and they had to come out and guard you? Uh, yeah, I think that goes for any game. You know, like you said, when you make so many shots on the outside, it just, you know, opens up so much stuff inside. And, uh, you know, we have so many threats outside that it just seems like the defense has to close out or it's three points. Um, so pretty much they're either deciding they're going to let us shoot threes or they're going to let us get twos. Um, but obviously, uh, you know, we just got to keep working and uh, keep shooting the ball in practice because, you know, it's going to be a big part of our team. But we also have the ability to, you know, score inside and make plays uh, from the mid-range game and other stuff like that. So I think we're, we're pretty deep and we're pretty, uh, you know, overall, ta overall talented, at, you know, every spot. And I think we have the ability to, you know, score inside and out. Uh, just a lot of times at the beginning of the game, like tonight, it happened from outside, which opened things up, like you said. 